31, let's take a look at the different forms for quadratic functions. And again, quadratic functions means we're going to graph parabolas. So a quadratic function is a polynomial function of degree 2. The graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. So like I said in example 1, when it comes to chapter 5, we're really going to be looking at all sorts of polynomials. We started with lines in chapter 4. We're doing quadratics right now in section 5.1, but we're really going to move beyond that. And so we, we have a basic idea of what parabolas look like. They're one of our toolkit functions. All right, so now we really want to break down the different forms of the quadratic function. You're probably pretty familiar with the general form. So the general form of a quadratic function is f of x being equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a doesn't equal zero. And the reason we specify a not equaling zero is because if a was equal to zero, well then this would just be a linear function, and that's, that's a different graph. All right, when you hear me refer to the standard form of a quadratic function, we have a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. And again, a can't equal zero. All right, now sometimes instead of referring to this as the standard form, folks will call this the vertex form of a quadratic function, and that's usually what I refer to it as. And the reason being is that it's really nice for us to read the vertex. It's the ordered pair h comma k, all right? And this is either the high point or the low point. So when I have a quadratic function in vertex form or in standard form, it's really easy for me to rattle off the vertex. I just see it as h k. Now, if it's not in standard form, right, maybe it's in general form, there's a nice formula to help you find the coordinates of the vertex. The x-coordinate, or h, is always negative b over 2a, and then the y-coordinate of the vertex, k, is that x-coordinate, negative b over 2a, plugged into the function. All right, and that looks a lot more convoluted than it is. We'll, we'll play it out in the next couple of examples. Okay, so with that, keeping this in mind, keeping general form and vertex form in mind, we're going to revisit that, that quadratic, that parabola that we had in example one. But now we're going to figure out what its equation is. So I'm going to, I'm going to scooch this up a bit. All right. Let's see if I can leave that in view and see how much we can get done here. So this says, Write an equation for the quadratic function g in the figure below as a transformation of f of x, right, your toolkit parabola function, and then expand the formula and simplify the terms to write the equation in general form. Okay, so I need to end in general form. And I know we just discussed it, but let me scooch this right back down so we can talk about it one more time. General form is ax squared plus bx plus c. So at the end of this, I'm going to have some a, b, and c for my quadratic, and we're, we're going to figure out what those are. But for right now, I'm going to start with vertex form. And the reason I'm going to start with vertex form or standard form is because I actually can read the vertex on this graph. All right, so let me again scooch this way back up. And let's see how far we can get through this problem. All right. So here's my vertex. We identified it in example one, three comma one. Those coordinates are going to become very important. So I know g of x, right? They're telling me this is function g of x. I know it's equal to a times x minus h squared plus k, okay? Now with that, let's keep in mind that we happen to know a pretty important trait we know the vertex of this parabola is the ordered pair of three comma one. And that vertex always comes in the form h comma k. So I am told, or I can infer, that h is equal to three and k is equal to one. And I see that one to one mapping. So let's go ahead and plug that in here. We know g of x is equal to a times x minus, well h was three and k was one. So I'm, I'm a little bit closer to being able to figure out the, the vertex form of my parabola. The only thing I'm missing is this a value, all right? Well, whenever you have one letter you need to solve for, that means you need to grab one more ordered pair. So let's see 
what other ordered pair lives on our parabola, and we can pick any of them. I tend to want to pick ordered pairs that fall on a grid mark, makes my life a little bit easier. So I see this ordered pair is nice and on a grid mark, and this ordered pair is also nice and on a grid mark. I don't need both of them, I just need one. I'm actually going to use this ordered pair because the numbers are going to be nicer. This is the ordered pair 0, 7. It looks like this was the ordered pair 6, 7. I could use either of these, but I'm going to opt to use 0, 7. And when I use 0, 7, again, they're not H and K. These are respectively, this is an ordered pair X and Y, so let me go ahead and plug this in. I know when X is 0, Y is 7. Or when X is 0, G of X is 7. So we're going to go 7 is equal to a times 0 minus 3 squared plus 1. Let's see what we're getting. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to get 7 is equal to 9a plus 1. That's telling me what 9a is equal to 6. Now let me close this off. That's also then telling me a is equal to 2 thirds. Okay, great. I'm getting closer to having my vertex form complete. So it looks like I ultimately know g of x. Now instead of a, I'm going to write 2 thirds times x minus 3 squared plus 1. This right here, right, this is the vertex form, or you could call it standard form. of our parabola. All right, we had a couple of forms back in um, chapter four for the line, right? We had the slope intercept form of the line, the point slope form of the line, the standard form of a line. Well, we've got a couple of forms here. So you could refer to this either as the vertex or the standard form, but you can read the vertex. I see it here, three, one. All right, now that's fine and good. This said to write the equation for the quadratic function, which I did, but then it says expand the formula and simplify the terms to write the equation in general form. And again, I just want to remind you, I'm going to scooch this back down so we can see what general form looks like. All right, if I want my parabola or the equation of my parabola to be in general form, I need ax squared plus bx plus c. All I know so far is a. I happen to know a is equal to 2 thirds, but I don't know b and c, so I'm going to multiply everything out. All right, so let's see what happens when we expand this. I'm going to move this up so that we have as much room to work with as possible. So here we go. If I want to expand this, all right, we're going to have g of x equaling 2 thirds times x minus 3 times x minus 3 plus 1. So if I work through this, I'm going to do 2 thirds times, all right, let's FOIL this. This is going to be x squared. Outer and inner are both negative 3x, so negative 6x, and then last is plus 9. All right, I'm going to continue to simplify this. So we have 2 thirds, let's see, 2 thirds x squared, um, 2 thirds times negative 6. You can do that in your head if you want, or if you weren't happy with it, you could always use your calculator, right? Two thirds times six would give me four, but I actually technically have two thirds times negative six, so I have minus four x. All right, two thirds times nine. Again, you could do that with your calculator. I'm just gonna do it in my head. It's plus six, and then I have this plus one here. So ultimately, if I wanna get to general form, we know g of x, oops, that looks a little weird. We know g of x is equal to 2 thirds x squared minus 4x. All right, 6 plus 1 is 7. And this right here, that is ultimately what they were asking me for, right? This is the general form. of your parabola. All right, and there's a couple of, there's an advantage here versus here. I, I like vertex form because I can see the vertex, it's 3, 1. 
The thing I like about general form is I can pretty easily see the y-intercept. Remember that to find a y-intercept, you let x equal zero. Well, if both of these terms zero out, what's the only thing that survives? The seven. And I knew that my y-intercept was zero, seven. I could see that from my graph. So there's an example of your graph matching your parabola. Okay, so before we leave this behind, I wanna mention some formulas up here that we didn't use in example two, but we will use them in example three. So the, the formulas we didn't use are, are these two, where if you're not sure what your vertex is, and we were sure in example two because we could read it from the graph, but let's say you weren't given a graph and you were like, oh no, what's my vertex? If you find, you can, excuse me, not if, you can always find the x coordinate of your vertex by looking at the ratio negative b over 2a. And you can always find the y coordinate of your vertex if you take that x coordinate and plug it into your function. All right, and when we move over to example three, we're gonna use that idea. So I don't want you to think we won't use these formulas. We just didn't use them directly in example two because we were able to read this vertex from the graph. All right, so with that, let's flip over to example three and we will work these formulas. I'll see you in a bit, bye.